So I want to do a couple examples with you guys very quickly here. So uh, jump on that sheet down to number two and look at this question here where it says the area of a square is m squared plus 10m plus 25. So let's find the length of each side. So pretty much any time you see in a question that it says area or volume, either way, if you see the words area or volume, you're then going to basically say, hey, if I want to know the sides, the only way to find the sides is to factor. So don't get overwhelmed by that fact. When you see the words area or volume and it says find the sides, you have to factor. That's the, pretty much the only option we have. So let's take a look. Here's my trinomial, m squared plus 10m plus 25. And we can factor this just the same way we've been factoring now for a few days. The positive 1 is what my a value is. My c value is 25. 1 times 25 is 25. And then we're looking for factors of 25 just for kicks. So I'll put one in there. But 1 plus 25 does not add up to 10. But 5 plus 5 does. So that adds up to our 10 value. So let's rewrite our polynomial. m squared plus 5m plus 5m again plus 25. Then we are going to kind of split down the middle so we can look at the left side and the right side. The left side, we look for our GCF. Our GCF in this term and this term is simply a single M. So that goes in front of our parentheses. And we divide by that M. So we divide both terms. And we are left with M plus 5. Then we uh, focus our attention on the next side. GCF here and here is a positive 5. And once again, when we divide by 5, divide by 5, we're left with m plus 5. So you can see those orange m plus 5s are the same. Let's create our final answer. Our final answer has to do with those two binomials. And we take our GCFs, m and positive 5. Those come together. And then our second binomial is that repeat binomial, m plus 5. So there we go. This is the side length, you could call this the length and this the width. But notice that they're the same. And the reason why they're the same is because this is a square. So squares always have the same side lengths. Now here's what I want you to think about though. Part two of that question, part or number three rather, it now asks us to find the perimeter of the square and the square's dimensions were m plus 5. Right? So I really want you to make sure you're clear on how we do that. It's very basic. If I ever ask you to find the perimeter, if we ever ask you to find the perimeter, that really is saying factor first. You have to factor your area before you can find the perimeter. There's no way to find the perimeter without factoring first. So kind of the pre-step to this is you must factor. Once you factor, then you can find the perimeter of your object. So here, we could really you have two options. You could do m plus 5 plus m plus 5 plus m plus 5 plus m plus 5. You could add all those together. Or the other person sitting next to you is just going to do 4 times m plus 5 because there's 4 of them. So if we uh, either add all these together or distribute this, we end up with 4m plus 20. Same thing here, 4m plus 20. That is the perimeter of this square. So remember, if we ask you to find perimeter, you must factor first. All right, let's immediately try number four. I want to look at number four because number four now asks you to find the sides given the volume. And the volume is basically the same idea, except if you remember... The formula for the volume of a rectangular prism, the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism, remember rectangular prisms look something like this. I'm not an artist, but this is a quick representation. Right? This is what our rectangular prism looks like. So on a rectangular prism, you have a length, you have a width, and you have a height. So to find that volume, you multiply all three of those together. So what I want you to notice here is now you're going to have 1 
two, three factors. As opposed to the first one, if it's area, you're only going to have two factors. But with volume, you're going to have three. So let's take a look at this question in, uh, in particular. They give us that volume. Our volume is 8m cubed. So you can write down this right here. 8m cubed minus 128m. Now, if you remember, what we talked about was the, the fact that every time, the very first thing we should do is we should look at these two terms, or three terms, however many they happen to be, and you ask yourself, do I have a GCF? And we do. In this particular case, we do have a GCF. The biggest number that we can divide out, if of, of both the 128 and the 8, is we can divide an 8 out of both of those. So 8 can be divided out. I'm going to put that out front. And they both have an M in common as well. So we can divide an M out to the front. When we do so, if we divide by 8M, divide by 8M, we're left with on the inside, we're left with M squared because 8 divided by 8 cancels and M cubed divided by M gives me M squared. Negative 128 divided by 8 gives you negative 16 and the M's cancel. Now, here's where you've got to be paying very close attention. Because when you look at this question, you might think you're done. You think, oh, I factored out my GCF. Yeah, but hopefully you're recognizing this right here is what we call that difference of two squares. And you have to be able to recognize that, that, oh, yeah, this can break into two binomials. And we take the square root of the first one and we get mm. We get, take the square root of the second one, you have 4, 4, and your signs have to be different. Now, the last thing is to not forget your 8m right here. So this right here is my final answer, meaning that this is the length of my polynomial, excuse me, of my uh, rectangular prism. This is the width of my rectangular prism, and this is the height of my rectangular prism. Now we've found those three components. One, two, three. Those are the three pieces of your rectangular prism volume. Okay, so one final question here. This one's not any different, but I wanted to point this out before the video finishes up. I've given you area, but I've also given you an additional side. And what I want to remind you about is this side right here, you're just going to ignore it for a few minutes. Just ignore that right there. Way too many people tried to multiply these together, or they tried to divide them somehow, they tried to do some, they add them, they do a lot of weird things. Just ignore that piece for a minute and factor this, okay? If you factor this trinomial right here, you'll see what ends up happening. So 10 times 15 gives me negative 150, okay? So now we're going to be looking for factors of negative 150 that add up to negative 19. So if we think about factors of 150, um, the 10 and the 15, there's no way that they're going to add up to um, negative 150, or excuse me, add up to negative 19. But if we take 150 and we divide it by, let's try um, 5, it gives me 5 and 30. That's not going to work. Let's try 150 divided by 6. 6 and 25. There it is. So we're going to go with negative 25 and positive 6. Those add up to negative 19. All right, I'm going to run through this a little bit faster so my video doesn't run out on me. All right, writing this out here. And now I look for my GCFs. That would be a 5w, we're left with 2w minus 5. Here that would be a positive 3, we're left with 2w minus 5. So now we have 5w plus 3 and, oops, plus 3 and 2w minus 5. So you can see that that 2w minus 5 is one of, is this guy right here. That's why I told you to ignore it for a minute. He was coming up. This is your answer right here. There's your answer. 5W plus 3 is the missing side that we were